This indicates that the accuracy is 85%, which seems that MSA is not accurate, which needs to be validated because there is a standard which we follow for MSA, it is 90%. So for example, if there is something which is measured by one operator, and if both of them are 90% accurate, then we would call that as a strong measurement system analysis. If it is less than 85, less than 90%, which means the measurement system is not good to go, we need to fix the measurement system. So that's, that's it's very, very important. Then now we talk about two things which is called accuracy and precision. That's very good to know information. Accuracy is when the data points are closer to me, but far from each other. Precision is when the data points are closer to each other, but away from me. Our equipment which we are going to measure should be accurate as well as precise. So you can see here in this example, it is precise because the data points are closer to each other but stay away from me, this is this, so that's precise but not accurate. This is accurate but not precise. Data points are closer to the mean, but they are not precise. They are not closer to each other. There's a lot of variation which we can observe. The third, neither precise nor accurate. The data points are very, very far away from me and, far, and very, very far away from each other. However, we should always ensure that the process or the equipment that we, we are measuring it should be accurate as well as precise. Now in the major phase of Six Sigma, we have answered the first three questions, which is what to measure, how to measure, and how to ensure what to measure is correct or not. Now we need to understand some of the concept, which is defect versus defect. What is the difference between defect and defect? A defect is essentially the failure of a company to meet the customer expectation. It's a defect. And defective is any one non-conformity is a is a defect, and a unit with a defect or many defect is called a defective. Okay, that's the fundamental difference between defect and defect. Defect is basically if there is one particular feature which is not meeting the customer requirement, but customer still accept it, but he is not declaring the product as defective. It is. It's not meeting the customer certain requirement, but defective is if it's that the critical requirement, which is not meeting the customer requirement, then in that case, the customer doesn't accept that product. And that's why it is called defective. So we are going to talk about the process capability wherein we will understand DPU, DPO and DPMO. DPU stand for defects per unit, DPO stand for defects per opportunity and DPMO stand for defects per million hour. So let's understand each of these terms one by one. Defects per unit is the average number of defects observed when sampling a population. The formula for DPU is defect divided by a total number of units. DPO, defects per opportunity, it's a metric that indicates the number of defects in a process per opportunity. So the formula for DPO is defect divided by total number of opportunities because in one unit there could be multiple opportunities. DPMO, which is called as defect per million opportunity. It is defined as a ratio of the number of defects in sample to the total number of defects opportunities multiplied by 1 million. So we want to know in a 1 million kind of uh, opportunity how many defects are I would have. So that is called DPMO. So it's very simple. Defects divided by total number of uh, units into opportunities per unit into 1 million. So that's how we'll be able to calculate the DPM. So we have certain examples. Now we will we will learn that how to calculate the DPMO. So I have uh, 15 defects and 305 opportunities. So let's calculate DPMO. So now since we have understood the process capability, which is DPU, DPO, and DPMO, now we are going to do some practical demonstration of DPU, DPO, and DPMO and then see that how we would be able to calculate that, okay? So we have certain examples here. We have got defects, which is 15 units, 500, how to calculate DPU, okay? So let's do some examples here. Bear with me for a minute, okay? So here I have uh, done, let's say, take the example of the first one. We have got 
18, uh, 200 audit samples. We have got 15 opportunities, okay? And now we want to see that uh, we have got 36 errors. So I want to calculate DPU here, okay? So DPU says defects divided by total opportunity. So defects that I have is 36 here. Okay, you can see 36 defects divided by, so let's do another example because this is pertaining to DPO. So let's say I have audit done for 300. Okay, uh, total opportunities are 500 and errors are 15. Okay, now if you want to calculate DPU, so it is defects, which is 15 divided by total opportunities. My DPU would be 0 0.03, okay? So 0 0.03 is the DPU that I have here, uh, defects per units, okay? So total units is 500, okay? So I can mention it has units here so that you'll be able to understand it well and the errors that I have 15. So out of 500 units that I have, I have 15 errors. Let's remove audit so that you won't get confused. So I want to calculate DPU. So your defects per unit is 0 0.03. So which is, which is pretty good. So uh, in, when you prepare 500 units, you only make 15 errors, so which is 0 0.03. Now let's take another example, okay? So let's say if I have 100 units here and 45 errors. So how do I calculate? DPU formula says errors, which is defects divided by total units. That is 0 0.45. So that is the DPU. We have, so we have understood DPU here. So DPU only has either pass or fail. So we have total units produced and how many of them are errors. So there are no opportunities in DPU. So let's understand DPO now. Okay, so we the perfect example would be here, the first that we can see here. So I can just put it over here so that you'll be able to understand it well. So now I want to calculate DPO, defects per opportunity. So the formula says defects divided by total opportunity. So how many total opportunities that I have? So the total opportunity that I have is the total samples, which is the 200 multiply by the opportunity. So there are the total opportunities is 3000 and the error is 36 that we already see. So the formula for DPO is error divided by total opportunities, which is 0 0.012. Okay, so that's a difference between DPU and DPO. In DPU, it's either pass or fail, total units, how many of them are errors. Here, we have prepared total unit, total units here of 200, but each unit has some opportunities and therefore it became 3000 total and the error count is 36, okay? So that's how we calculate DPO. Let's take another example. So here the total opportunity would be 150 into 18, which is 2,700. So in 2,700 opportunities that we have, now in that particular case, we need to calculate the DPO. So DPO would be total errors, which is 45 divided by 2,700, okay, which is 0 0.1666. So this is DPO. Great. Now we will go to the final section, which is DPMO. How to calculate DPMO? So DPMO, as you know, is the defects per million opportunities. To calculate DPMO, first of all, we need to calculate DPO, which is defects per opportunities. So now we'll calculate defects per uh, million opportunity here. So it is very simple. We just uh, multiply this with 1 million. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so now let's say in million opportunities, for example, if I have 1 million opportunities, so I would have around 16,667 defects. If you want to calculate the DPMO for uh, 
uh, this example, this previous example, I would be able to do that as well. Okay, so DPMO for this would be this multiply by one, two, three, four, five, so 12,000. So it says out of 1 million opportunities, there are 12,000 defects. Although the defects per opportunity would be 0 0.012, but if I want to calculate it on a million scale, then I'll have to multiply it by a million. And therefore I was able to calculate 12,000 here and 16,667 here, okay? So that's how we, we were able to calculate the DPU, DPO, and DPMO. I hope everybody uh, out here is able to understand the difference between defects per unit, defects per opportunity, and defects per million opportunity. So process sigma, we can see the formula here is at norm sine V, one minus defects upon opportunities. D stand for defects and O for opportunities, plus 1.5. And uh, we would be able to calculate the sigma level. So there are two ways to calculate it. So I will just show it to you both ways. Okay, so here's a sheet. Now we want to use a formula uh, to calculate the sigma level. Okay, so we have, we can use any of the examples here. We have defects and we have the opportunity here. So it's norm sine V, you can see here in last in the list, one minus defects, this is defects upon total opportunities, which is 500, okay, plus 1.5. So 3.3 .3 is the sigma level for this particular illustration that we have done. So this is the sigma level. It's such a simple thing that to do. And now we want to calculate the sigma level here. Norm sine V, one minus defects. So how many defects that we have? 36. And how many opportunities that we have? 3000. Close the bracket plus 1.5. So here the sigma level is 3.75. Want to do it for this example, you can see 3.76 also because we have rounded off. Uh, for this example, if you want to calculate the signal level, it is we'll use the same formula that we just used for the previous examples. So norm sine V one minus uh, error defects divided by total opportunities. You close the bracket plus 1.5, 3.6. So it's such a simple thing to do. We just have to use this formula to do that. Okay. So this is how we have calculated the sigma level. Now, as, as previously said, there are two ways to do that. So we can use, uh, go to Google. You can put sigma, sigma calculator. Okay, uh, just click on the first link, which is process sigma calculator. This is the most commonly used and you would be able to get the same results here also. So let's see how, it's very simple. Just have to remove what is mentioned earlier. So let's take the same example that we have done here. So 515 errors and 500 units, okay. 500 and here 15. So I click on calculate. You see the DPMO has come here. The defects have come here and the process sigma 3.38, 3.3. Okay, so that's how you would be able to do uh, calculate the process sigma level using the six sigma calculator using this link, uh, www.i6sigma.com and using the calculator that I have. Okay, so that's